Well, let's go on with the part B of this session. Next presenter is uh, Mirko Sindico from Kyrgyzstan, uh, Belgium. And the uh, presentation is about the influence of the particle size distribution on surface quality of marriage in 300 parts produced by laser powder bed fusion. Thank you for the introduction. So, I named the first slide of this presentation starting backwards in the astral user case because I wanted to show what are the possible applications of the research that we are doing and also an industrial user case study this is also a case study of the palm square project it's a metallic mold insert for, for injection molding to produce abs plastic parts you might have seen the same part uh, just recently at SF sff 2019 we did some top topology optimization but today we want to talk about the industrial user case requirements so what are the requirements for the part and more precisely about the top surface and the cavities. So by the SPI standard, the Society of Plastic Industry, you need to achieve very tight tolerances of the surface quality of mold inserts and mold in general for injection molding. You start from a normal glossy finish, so a surface roughness that is maximum 0.1 microns array, and you can go to a super high glossy finish so down to 0 0.012 microns area. Now, this part is produced by laser powder the bed fusion and is in managing 300 material. Can we expect that we have this kind of surface out of LPBF? Of course, the answer is no. Normally, in laser powder the fusion, we are between 5 and 15, 20 microns array for the surface. It's quite good compared to other metal AM processes, but still, we are quite far from our target, which means that we have to perform several cross process operation. We go from a rough milling and we end to uh, end polishing. So five or six post processing and they cost time and they cost money. So the research question is here, can we try to improve the surface quality of the laser part of the fusion parts? For this specific application, we're talking about stop surface and can we try to skip if we improve the surface quality at least one or two post processing operation so we can save time and we can save money for the part the approach so this kind of research question is approached by different ways in palm square some of the talks today also talked about surface roughness but in this case i will talk about the influence of particle size so the powder properties on the final surface quality and uh, we all know that the powder properties they will influence the part property this is quite straightforward but for this presentation i want to focus on the particle size which is a morphological extrinsic property of the powder and connect that to the surface quality and uh, from literature what we know about that is that in very briefly if we decrease the average particle size we increase the, a little bit the purchase cost of the powder, depends on the distribution of the request, the supplier, the material. You decrease the flowability. This is quite critical because if you are not, if you don't have a, a powder that flows good, it might be that you are not able to deposit the powder with your recording system in the machine. But if you have still quite a good flowability, on average, you increase the part surface quality, meaning that you have a lower surface roughness. Now, this is quite well known in uh, research, in literature. There are many reviews also talking, putting all the papers together and talking about the connection between powder properties and part properties. But for this specific topic, so they co connecting the PSD to the surface roughness, there are just a few papers. It, we know the actual behavior. So if you decrease the average size of the particle size of the powders, uh, we will have a better surface, but we don't really know how much it will decrease. There are, and uh, the few papers that are available are just on uh, 316L stainless steel material. So we try to bridge this gap and present other results for margin 300. Our research methodology, we want to analyze the different distribution of margin steel powders. 
starting from managing 1545 microns, this is the range of the powder. This is a standard that is provided by the supplier. Then we buy a managing 1030 range distribution and 515 microns. As you might notice, we don't only decrease the average particle size, but we also try to narrow the range of the distribution because this normally it gives you a better flowability for the smaller particles. Then what we do is that we do a full powder characterization and then we create a DOE, a design of experiment, and we repeat the same build job just by changing the powder. We do that on a Trix, a Proix 320 machine, and we chose a DOE at three different volumetric energy densities. Why? Because we know from previous research at KU Leuven and from literature that around this energy density, we will get the conductive mode for margin steel. So we have high density of our parts. Then we build our array of specimens at a layer thickness of 30 microns, and we analyze them. About roughness, we will start presenting just uh, linear profilometry, so standard uh, profilometry. We know that this is not the best way to characterize the surface IM properties, but at the beginning we were only we only had access to this kind of instrument, so we followed the ISO standard. And I will present some more results at the end of the presentation with other methods. So why we do that to understand how surface quality develops and to understand the position limits of our system, meaning we want to see, to check if all the three powders are able to be spread by our recruiting system or if we encounter any flowability issue, any agglomeration that we are not able to deposit the powder. So for the powder characterization, we started with laser diffraction just to check the ranges of our distribution, if they were correct. Then optical microscopy and uh, computer tomography. That was to check the shape of our powder. We wanted the powder, the three batches, to have more or less the similar shape, because otherwise we don't know if we have more influence from the morphology, so the shape of the powder, or from the size of the powder. And uh, for these three batches, we all have high sphericity, and they have more or less the same values for circularity and sphericity. So this is good. Then we did some STM testing for outflow and upper density, the tap density. For outflow, you can see that only the standard powder was able to go through the outflow meter. But actually, outflow is not the best way to say, OK, a powder can be used or not in laser powder diffusion. In this case, it's better to look at the Ausner ratio, the last column in this table. You can see that the first two powder, the 1545 and 1030, they have more or less the same Ausner ratio. But the managing 515, it goes quite high, and it goes higher than the suggested value in the literature, which is 1.25. This is not a standard, but it just says if you go above 1.25, uh, it's this value will say uh, you might have serious problems in depositing your powder. So actually, for this presentation, I will not talk anymore about the 515 because you need a different recoating system. And now, for now, we are just using a standard recoating blade. So otherwise, we are not comparing similar things. So 515 will not be presented anymore for now. And we look at the other two powders. So we did first produce the specimens, Archimedes relative density. That's to quickly check the density. Uh, this is the these are the results for the standard powder. On the x-axis, you have laser power and energy density for our DOE. On the y-axis, you have the relative density. You can see they're all above 99% dense. dense. Uh, the relative density increase for an increase in energy density or for an increase in laser power at the same energy density. And you can select an optimum setup of parameter, like in this case, if you want to build actual parts, we would select 170 watts 1,150 millimeter per second scan speed. Now, if we overimpose the results from the margin 1030, so the brighter columns, what we get is that the behavior is more or less the same for the density, but uh, the actual mean relative density is a little bit lower. It's not that low, so that it's almost negligible, the difference. But we were expecting also, actually, we were expecting from finer powder to have a higher density. 
because normally if you have finer powder is more easily melted by a laser but uh, remember we also asked to have a narrow spread of the distribution so the distribution is becoming more narrower and this lowers the upper density of the powder so this might be the cause why we have a this slight difference in relative density anyhow anyhow is almost negligible the difference so we can continue and talk about the top surface roughness for the top surface roughness if we just look at the optimum values optimum uh, selection of parameters for the standard powder the array that we obtain is 12 point something microns now if we overimpose the finer distribution what we get is five point something so more than 50 percent reduction in the area value we can also have a quick look on the surface with the SCM. And you can see how the process is becoming more stable. We have more stable melt tracks and less sputters if you use the finer powder distribution. Now, if you look at the full DOE, what you see is that, first of all, okay, you, we can talk a lot about how the surface roughness develops depending on the parameters. So it's inversely proportional to AP and directly proportional to the laser power, the same AP, more or less. But what, what is more important, what are the two takeaway messages for this presentation is, on average, you always have a reduction. The mean reduction is 40%, but you can go higher, higher than 50% reduction in a rate. And also, if you have a look at the 70 joule millimeter cube uh, volumetric energy density for the finer powder, the 1030, the salinity zone seems wider for the margin 1030 distribution. And this is quite important for, for example, for industrial application, because it means that you can select a set of parameters in which you are scanning faster and anyway, so you increase your productivity and anyway, expect a good surface quality. So this was the second takeaway message. Uh, now, if we look at what we are, we are at five point something, our minimum array, so way better than before with the standard powder but still we are in the range of laser powder but fusion and if you remember our target was glossy finish we will never reach glossy finish by laser powder but fusion but at least if we reduce below two or three microns array we can skip one of the one or two post-processing steps and therefore save time and money save time and money for our specific application which is the metallic mode insert so let's say, is there a way to go below, for example, two microns array for the top surface? There is actually, it actually there is. So it's just an extra slide talking about an overview melting strategy that we try to implement for this application. So we wanted to, remelting, we know is quite effective, but also with remelting, it's not easy to go below three, two microns array. What we wanted to exploit was to combine the fact that we are using a small powder distribution combined with remelting. So what we did was to build the initial base of the part with optimum parameter set at a layer thickness of 30 microns. Then since we are using a fine powder distribution, it means that we are, can use smaller layer thickness. So we built the top with a layer thickness of 10 microns, and then afterwards we do the melting. Now we have a full DOE also for this uh, result, but otherwise I go over time. So I will just present one of the many results we obtain. Uh, for example, if we do only the melting on the base, for this set of parameters, we get below five, but still above two microns array. If we do only the layering at 10 microns, again, it's below five, but not to our target. But if we combine the two methods, then we get a super roughness of 1.5 microns every. So we are below the two microns target and eventually we can skip some of the post-processing steps. So for conclusions, we tested three different managing steel powders with three different PSDs. The Margin 515 was deemed unsuitable for our recording system, a standard recording blade. 
But if we compare the other two distribution, we have a decrease of more than 50% top surface array for the margin 1030 distribution. And we also implemented another overlay melting strategy that was able to get us below two microns top surface array. For future steps, we want to establish the solution surface quality for angle surfaces because we don't only reduce the top surface uh, roughness, but also for angle surfaces. And what is important, I only talked about array, so standard profilometry, profilometry. But we know that this is not the best way to characterize surface AM uh, characteristics because you have a very complex surface and the standards that you use to filter to get an array value, they were developed before this process was actually used in industry. So we probably will need an update in the standards. But for now, what we can do is that we try to also have a look at the 3D, so full topographies of our parts doing 3D topographic measurements. So we recently bought a sensor fire machine, a 3D surface profiler. These images that I will present, I will just took, I just took them last week. So we are at the initial stage because this instrument is new for us in our team. Uh, we use confocal microscopy. So at the left, you have the margin 1545 specimens, so the standard powder. At the very right, you have the Nova remelting. Uh, if you do just form remo removal, you can compare then the assay value. You can see that the trend is more or less the same as for the array value. Then you can do some filtering to try to align the scanning tracks. So have a look at only your scanning, scanning tracks. But if you rescale everything to the same Z range, you have a better view. So you, now you can see how, if you look at the very left, you have a, 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 an unstable surface with a lot of sputters and your laser line tracks that are becoming wider and narrower. But if you look at the far right, the Nova remelting strategy, you have a smooth surfaces, surface in which you have almost undistinguishable, undistinguishable laser line tracks. So I want to thank you for listening to me. I want to thank my co-authors for this study. And I will ask you if you have any question. Richard? Uh, all of, the only advice I can give you now is that if you go from RA, yeah. don't go from RA to SA, please. There is no difference. So SA won't tell you anything more about that surface than RA. Nothing. Yeah. And so what you mentioned, and you said, you said, you can see the widths are changing or things like that. SA won't tell you anything about that. So you need to start working at actually what you've got there and designing some kind of parameter which will act. To, uh, to which will be related to your, your function, actually what you're trying to produce. So don't, don't think everyone uses this or, or it's in the standards, therefore I've got to use this. But think about what you actually want to do and apply a procedure which allows you to do that. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, I, I have a look, of, of, I wanted to have a look also at this just to see that the trend was the same for the values. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we need to investigate more properly on the actual characteristics of the surface. And the questions, yes, there is another one. Um, the second one that I'm working on the uh, um, the object is to use the remelting on that, but I'm trying to do the uh, So for the slopes, for now, I just want to understand how much reduction we get by changing powder because we see I just did some measurements on the 90 degrees surfaces and we have still a considerable reduction uh, but I if you want to present then I, I think it's important to present all at least uh, some of the angles to make the reader or whatever is reading your paper understand okay, this is what you can get better on different angles and this is what you can get better on the top surface. Normally the top surface, the, depending okay, on your parameters, it can be the worst surface. There are other ESRs, other researchers in our group 
also it can take over the first presenter she is also working on uh, try to reduce this edge effect or try to reduce the yeah improve the quality with remelting on the slope surfaces it's not perfectly fit, fitting in my topic but we can of course collaborate since we are both from k Logan, so Well, if there are no other questions, I will uh, go with the next speaker and uh, we can uh, thank again uh, you for the presentation.